Stephen Weltig was born on the 13th of June 1952 in St. Louis, Missouri. He lived there his whole life. On April 23, 1993, 40-year-old Stephen was working at Ajax Liquor. He was the owner of the liquor store located on Jeffco Boulevard in Arnold. That morning, a man and a woman went to the store to buy some items. They found Stephen Weltig's body lying face down and called the police. His life was taken by his own gun, execution style. Nothing was taken in the store, so burglary seemed unlikely to be the motive. Investigators questioned Stephen's friends and family members, but no useful information came to light. There were also no witnesses that saw anything suspicious. Despite the investigators' best efforts, there were no leads and the case sadly went cold for many, many years. Then in 2015, a woman came forward claiming that her husband, Laurel Harp, ended the life of Stephen. An associate of Laurel also came forward that year and told police that Laurel Harp was indeed responsible. In September of 2020, the police believed they had enough evidence to prove that Laurel Harp took the life of Stephen Weltig. They went to the Riverview Care Center nursing home in St. Louis to arrest him. Laurel confessed immediately. He claimed, however, that the two of them were fighting when a gunshot went off. That is false, however, since investigators determined that Stephen was on his knees at the time he was shot. Laurel also told investigators that he went to the liquor store with the intention of roughing up Stephen. People would often hire Laurel to collect or enforce. He would often use violence to collect money that people owed. Laurel has served time in prison for unlawful use of a weapon, burglary and stealing. If convicted now, he faces life in prison without a possibility of probation or parole. Sadly, Stephen's mom passed away earlier this year before learning who took her son's life at fateful day 27 years ago. 42-year-old Mark Jeffrey Dribben lived in Portland, Oregon in 1999. He worked for United Airlines. On July 2nd, Mark called his employer and requested the night off because he had a family emergency. The next day he was seen at the Eagle Tavern on Burnside Street. There was nothing unusual about his demeanor. That was the last time anyone saw Mark Dribben. He was a responsible worker. Mark was also very close to his family. His family and friends did not believe that Mark simply left town. Investigators went to his residence. They found that numerous items were missing and that his vehicle had been taken. On the walls of his house, a substantial amount of blood was found. It was clear that someone tried to clean it up. There was no sign of forced entry. A few weeks later, his car was found in an area that he did not frequent. Despite investigators' best efforts, they could not find Mark anywhere. They were, however, pretty sure that he made with foul play because of what they found inside his house. The case went cold. In March 2019, the police's cold case unit reopened Mark's case. They submitted the suspect's DNA from his case to a private lab for forensic genealogy analysis. I'm not exactly sure where the DNA came from, perhaps his car or the inside of his house. The private lab compared the DNA in publicly available databases such as 23andMe and Ancestry.com. After some more testing and investigative work, the police arrested 52-year-old Christopher Lovren in May 2020. He did not live far from where Mark lived. It is not clear how the two men knew each other. It is suspected that Mark's life being taken was due to a relationship going bad between the two men. Even though the case is now solved, 
there are still some lingering questions. Why did Christopher end the life of Mark? And where did he bury Mark's body? Mark's 87-year-old father had this to say. I'd just like to thank, from the bottom of our hearts, all the hard work from the Portland Police Department and the whole legal system put in to bring this up to the point it is in. Seventy-one-year-old Phyllis Harrison lived in Adelaide, Australia in 1998. She was well known in the community. Phyllis was a member of the Elizabeth Grove Uniting Church and the Bowling Club. Phyllis was last seen on the 2nd of March, 1998, when she was walking her dog at around 7.30 p.m. The next morning, her daughter and grandson entered her Elizabeth South home. They discovered her body in the kitchen. She had been stabbed multiple times. The house was ransacked, but still to this day it is unknown if anything was taken. The police quickly found a knife nearby. It matched the type of knife that was used in the attack. There were no signs of forced entry, suggesting that she had let the person who took her life inside. The police had no idea who could have done this or what the motive could be. The knife was retained by the police so it could be used later when advances in DNA technology were made. Finally, in June of 2020, a 45-year-old man was arrested and charged in connection with the 22-year-old cold case. The South Australia Police Assistant Commissioner Peter Harvey said that the arrest was the result between major crime detectives and forensic experts. He also said that he was prevented from providing details about the man's identity because of legal restrictions. We only know that the man is 45 years old and lived in Northfield. Peter Harvey also was not clear about what led police to this 45-year-old man. In his statement, he did mention that DNA played a part, however, and thanked the forensic experts. Perhaps they were able to collect fingerprints from the knife that was found and matched it to the man this year, but that is just speculation. Phyllis's children are relieved that it won't happen again, 